Welcome back to my channel. Today we dive into a very emotional video. This video brings to light what happens in Jackson, Mississippi. Apparently, there is a graveyard of 215 bees found behind this prison. What is really happening at this prison? Well, we will get into all of that and unveil what has been happening at this prison. Now, in case you don't know, this prison in Mississippi literally has a graveyard behind where they bury unalive people. Now, the most shocking and sad thing about all of this is that when the families of these unalive people find out they are told to purchase the means of their unalived family members the prison is literally making people pay just to have their unalived family members return to them now in this video mario mo's mother who is one of those who was buried behind this prison in jackson mississippi shares how she was told to to buy back the right of her son to be able to bury him properly now note that when a person gets unalived at this prison they never inform the unalived person's relatives but just go ahead and bury there is in shallow graves behind their prison now you'd wonder why it has to be like this why don't they even inform the family members to make matters worse when a family knows about it after looking for, for their loved ones they are told to buy them back how heartless can one be check out this video as a lady narrates her sad story of what happened to her son we had to buy him back from the state mm. in order to do anything we to get a death certificate we had to spend money And that's not right. Explain that, Miss Moore, when you went to try to get the death certificate. When I went to try to get a death certificate for him, I couldn't get one because he was in the state's uh, property. And I had to buy him back from the state property in oh, order Lord. to get a death certificate to do anything, to try to go forward with anything about my son. I couldn't do anything. And he, me and my family, we didn't deserve that. Thank you, Ms. Moore. And understand what she's saying is, and you'll hear similar stories from Ms. Bettis said, they now know that their sons are in the ground behind the Hines County Jail. And the government officials say, well, before we can give you any kind of proof of validation, did they tell you you had to buy back the rights? Buy the rights back. You have to buy that back. Which is mind-boggling. You know, why? We're going to fight to give them the honor and the dignity and the respect and the justice <laughs> they deserve. That's right. That's You're not right. by yourself. Yes. We need justice. At this point, I don't even know what to say because this type of treatment to a fellow human being is questionable. Do these people at this county jail ever put themselves in these unalive people's shoes? If that was to happen to them, would they be happy that their families are not even informed about it? And when they learn about it, what do they have to do? They still have to purchase their books. Like seriously? Now this is really inhumane, but check out these videos as different people share their own take on this issue. I will be back with more details to this story. Can someone tell me why the entire world is not talking about what is happening at this prison? If you don't know, they have found 215 prisoners buried in caves behind a prison and they told no one that their family members had died. The reason it was found out is a woman was looking for her son. Turns out he was ran over by a sir and they just drug him into a which they made the prisoners dig and then they buried him without telling anyone. They did this 214 more times. You think that's the wildest part? You think that's the wildest part? That prisons and cops are just murking people? No, we're used to that. The craziest part is for these people's family members to get proper burials, they have to buy bodies back from the prison, failed them, and buried them. What? My friends in other countries have let me know America's their favorite reality show. Really is. Not all of the 215 people who were buried behind the Mississippi prison were prisoners. So Dexter Wade is one of the deceased individuals who is being represented by Ben Crump. It has been reported that Dexter Wade, he was not an inmate. He was hit and unalived by a vehicle. He had identification on his person at the time of his unaliving. His family was not notified of his eyes and they thought that he was missing. 
Turns out he was married among these other 214 people. And get this, he was identified by a number because they placed them into body bags, buried them in very shallow graves, which were marked by metal rods and numbers. They did not treat them like humans whatsoever. This is the type of stuff that happened during slavery, okay? So I need us to ride as hard for these 215 people who the county is now demanding their families to buy their bees back from. We need to ride as hard for them as we are for this Cat Williams controversy. I need y'all to ride for this like you are these Stanley Cups. Because if it happened there, there's no telling where else it's happening. And the fact that the county is demanding payment for these bodies from the families shows you that they must have had something going on where they plan to profit from these bodies, especially considering they were put into shallow graves. As you can see here, some of these families, their loved ones had been missing for over a year. They had no idea what was going on, no idea they were deceased. Turns out, people who work for the county or the prison or whoever had their bodies and marrying them in these shallow, poorly marked graves. It makes you wonder what else is happening here. We know that this country is into black market harvesting and things like that. And we can't just chalk those types of things up to conspiracies anymore, especially when you have some sinister, weird, evil like this happening. There has to be something that attorney Ben Crump can do to block the county from making money off of these families. He's calling for a full investigation, but honestly, I think the FBI needs to get involved in this. This needs to be bigger than that county, than that state. This needs to go federal. But of course, these are black and brown bodies, so nobody's really pushing for it like that. So that's why I'm saying if black people could put the energy behind this, that they are putting behind Cat Williams and his story, we could really put fire up under their asses and get some action on this. Now, this breaking news is coming out of Jackson, Mississippi. 250s were found buried behind the Jackson, Mississippi jail. This is really shocking. Earlier last year, a mother's son was missing. In the end, it was discovered that an off-duty Jackson police officer over and unalived him and beat him without telling his mother. Now, they tried to use every excuse in the book. They said once the word came out there, they knew where there was. Can you all believe that Jackson PD showed up three hours before the mother showed up to witness her son being exhumed? And one once they was exhumed, his ID was in his front pocket. Now, Jackson PD was trying to say they didn't know who he was. It was just a big lie. But now that we're finding out that 250s were found and buried behind the Jackson, Mississippi jail, this is disturbing. Now, when this was found out about, mothers came to the press conference and held up pictures for their loved ones, and they wanted to know if their loved ones were there. Now, not that these are shallow leads with just a number and a metal rod, and their families were never notified. On top of that, some of the families to the people that were buried thought that they were still missing and complaining to police to find their missing loved ones. And now they're being told to pay a fee in order to have their bodies removed so they can give proper None of this would have been discovered if not for Dexter Wade going missing in March and his mother reporting it to the police. Coming back to today's video, Makita Moore was notified of the unaliving of her older brother, Mario Moore, 40, from an online article revealing cases of two dozen eight side victims in which the jackson police had failed to notify the public or the families now mo's brother was the second on the list all two dozen teams were from a single year. Mo read the news of her brother's unaliving on October 10. However, the article reported that Mario had been unalived on February 2nd, over eight months earlier. NBC News reports that upon learning of the GD, Mo shuddered and cried out, Lord, this is my brother. Someone don't unalive my brother. Now, after discovering the truth, Mo immediately went to the Jackson Police Department's headquarters to find out more information but was told that no one was available. Moore would later learn that Mario had been unalived, wrapped in a, in a tarp and left on the street. For months, his bee had lain in the Hines County morgue and claimed. Then on July 14, inmates at the county penal farm had buried his remains in the paupers field. Like the dozens of other families, the news has wrecked the Moore family. What are you hiding? Moore said in a recent interview. Why can't you just come out and just tell somebody that their child is gone? Mario was buried the same day and in the same place as 
as Dexter Ward. On December 4th, the family of Jonathan David Harkins, 39, learned of his unaliving from news outlets. Harkins was first reported missing in June 2022, nearly a year before the first two cases suggested that the practice of hiring victims in the pauper's field has been going on for years. Now, Jonathan Harkins was discovered unalive by the authorities just days after he weren't missing on May 23rd, 2022, in a hotel room in Jackson. The unaliving is widely believed to have been due to an overdose. Now, investigators were able to verify his identity with no problem or delay. However, like the other cases, the Jackson Police Department did not inform the family and the county inmates were made to body alongside the others. The hacking story echoes the first two. For over a year, Jonathan's mother contacted the sheriff's office every few weeks asking for any news. She was told time and again that they had no information. Now, speaking with NBC News, Hakim's mother said, I want people to know that somebody is not doing their job and making folks go through what I've been through. They can't even do the job of notifying an unalive person's next of kin. They probably just thought another addict gone. Now, the Popers Field Graveyard revelation has made headlines on and off again since the first major case was unveiled last fall. However, the news coverage is not nearly proportional to the scale of the crime nor the level of public outrage. Moreover, there are countless pressing questions that must be answered, including the identity of the remains. Predictably, there appears to be very little effort from the establishment to carry out a formal investigation and critical details are still being kept from the public. The most moving and heartfelt accounts of the situation can be found on social media as hundreds of thousands of workers and young people react and grieve for the families. In reaction to one TikTok that went viral on the story, commenters expressed their widespread reaction Reaction. One user, Emma, writes, I really want to say I'm shocked, but I'm just not anymore. The comment has 8,000 likes and it is filled with replies such as me too and the fact that I'm not shocked actually breaks my spirit. Other comments complain, how is this not huge national news and this needs more attention. Another video with over a million likes has a comment, nothing. The only place I've heard about this is TikTok. Wild. Of course, countless more express, of course, countless more express pure outrage. This sick me to the core to hear. The system is corrupt everywhere. I trust nothing if it comes from our government. There are dozens of videos on social media platforms that echo these same sentiments. Now, the public reaction speaks volumes about the state of social relations in the United States and more broadly. Workers are raged, refined, heartbroken, and deeply angered by the events. However, there is very little surprise to be found. It is largely considered predictable that the state institutions would be so quick and careless to disregard human life. Nearly four years of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has needlessly cost the lives of millions, has revealed clearly that both political parties and all the major state institutions value profits over the lives of workers. There are countless threads of the e immense social crisis woven into this awful situation. The violence present in society seeps into nearly every aspect of life with horrific consequences. The lives and struggles of victims at Hinds County Penal Farm are not unique. They are a snap short of conditions that face millions of workers and their families throughout the U.S. in 2024. Now, there have already been attempts by various groups to paint this purely as a social issue, but early signs show that this narrative is not being accepted by the public as easily as in previous events. Activist Arthur Reed, for example, has noted multiple times to the press that the issue extends beyond race, as the unalived varied in the pauper's field are both black and palm color alike. We have finally come to the end of the video. Feel free to share your own thoughts on this video what do you have to say thank you for watching and see you in my next video as i bring you another interesting video